Hello and welcome to Tech by Tosh. My name is Toshit and in this video we will learn about meeting settings in Microsoft Teams. How you can control anonymous users joining your team meetings and maybe prevent their actions. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump in and have a look. Now, First of all you need to have admin access to log on to Teams admin center. You can browse to admin.teams.microsoft.com or you can simply go to Office Microsoft 365 Admin Center and click on Teams under Admin Centers, which will take you to the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. I'm currently logged on to Microsoft Teams Admin Center for Tech by Tosh organization using my admin accounts. Now we're going to review meeting settings, which we can access from the left navigation by clicking on Meetings and then Meeting Settings. Now on this page, we have different options. Let me quickly walk you through different options. We have the settings for participants, which basically says whether we want to allow anonymous users to join the meetings for hosted by Tech Pythos organization. We can further customize the email invitations. We can change some network settings. I, I wouldn't worry about these settings for now. The focus for this particular video is on the participants. The setting for anonymous users can join a meeting is currently on. Anonymous users can interact with apps in meetings that is also on. So what does it mean? It's basically saying currently anyone with a meeting invite from Tech by Tosh organization can join MS Teams meetings conducted by Tech by Tosh users. Which means if an invitation is sent to person A and that person has forwarded that invitation to person B, both person A and B can join the meeting with the same invite and can remain anonymous. So there is no way to identify who has actually joined the meeting. Let me quickly show you how it works. For this, I'll open up MS Teams and set up a meeting with my Gmail account, which is not part of the organization. Now I have the new meeting invite, which is going to my personal Gmail account, and I'm just going to send it. The meeting invite has been sent. Let's just start the meeting. I click join and I click everything is fine. I'll click join now. Now I am logged in as a host. So when I say as a host, I this is the account which I have used to start, create the meeting. I will now go and check the meeting invite in my Gmail account and I will try to join the meeting using the personal account. So this is the invite I have received in my personal account. I go ahead and click on to join the meeting. It is now asking me to enter my name. Now, remember, the meeting invite was sent to my personal Gmail account. Right? If someone has that meeting invite, if I forward that email to someone else, the other person will also get the same screen. I can simply put my real name or I can use a fake name. So let's just go ahead and put Tosh for now. Let's say Tosh Gmail. Let's just join the meeting. So once I join the meeting using my personal Gmail account, my other account, which is the organization account, gets a notification whether I want to allow my personal account, which is a Tosh Gmail account or not. I can view the lobby or I can admit the other person, which is my personal account. So I can see this is the guest account which I have invited, which is my Gmail account. So I'll go ahead and say yes, admit the Gmail account. Now I can see I have both of my accounts, which is Tosh Gmail and Tosh B, which is the host account, which is both the accounts are there. While we are in this meeting, let's try to add some apps. So the host account, which is my organization account, I can add an app to share with the participants. Now we do have another, another setting within Teams Admin Center. Let's have a look at that one as well. So I'm back to my Admin Center now, which is Microsoft Teams Admin Center. As you can see, there is another setting which says anonymous users can interact with apps in meetings. So if I go back to Microsoft Teams, I will try to add Microsoft Forms as an app to share with the participants in the meeting. Let's just go ahead and add it. 
Now I have the app, I can create a new poll. I just go ahead and create a multiple choice quiz. Once we save it, we need to publish it so that the audience can see this app. We just go ahead and click on the launch button so that it is published and visible to others. Now, once the app is published in my personal meeting account, I do get a notification. I can click on the conversations and see the form has been published. Because we had the option for anonymous users to interact with apps enabled, that's why as a guest user, I'm able to now interact with the app. I'll just go ahead and select one and submit vote. So I can now, I can see that I can interact with the apps. Now, if I come back to Microsoft Teams Admin Center and have this setting off, which is anonymous users can interact with apps in meetings, and I go back to my Teams meeting and try to interact with the apps, then let's see what happens. Now, I'm, I'm back on my Microsoft Teams meeting with my personal Gmail account, and I can see the poll is there. So let's try and submit the vote. So when we submit the vote, we actually get an error which basically says at this time, you don't have permissions to use this app. So this is how you can control who can access and who can actually interact with the apps within your team meetings. Now you have an option. So let's, let's try and have a look at, um, you know, different options, different meeting options and how we can toggle those options and what happens. I'm back to Microsoft Teams admin center and I have these settings off or disabled. So, which means anonymous users cannot join the meetings and anonymous users cannot interact with apps in the meetings. So let's go and see what actually happens when a user tries to join the meeting with a personal account. So again, I'll try to join the meeting with my Gmail account. I already have the invite. So let's just go and see what happens. I'm now going to join the meeting with my personal Gmail account and I'll click join now. And I get this message, which says only people with access to this org can join its meetings. If you have an account with access to this org, sign in with that account. Otherwise, contact the meeting organizer. Now, what it means is because I'm not I'm not a part of this organization. I'm not a part of Tech by Tosh organization, and I'm, because I'm using my personal Gmail account, I do not have access to the meetings anymore. All right? To be able to get access to the meetings, I should be added as a guest in in that organization. Now, based on your organization's um, requirements and policies, you can toggle on and off or enable disable these settings and whether you want to allow anonymous users to join the meetings or not. Um, the option is there and this is how you configure it. All right. In this quick video, we learned about meeting settings in Microsoft Teams. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more topics like this, please leave comments below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Well, that's it for today. I hope to see you next time.